Hey guys. So got a uh, got a queue. I don't know a whole lot about this queue. Okay, I won in a raffle. It's a nitty nitty queue. Um, it seems like I I entered a satellite raffle that Tony Choi was putting on on like Sunday last Sunday night. It's Monday now. Um, I won that satellite, which allowed me to pick some uh, numbers in the main raffle, and I won that. So. So that was last Monday. I don't know a lot about this queue. I've kind of purposely not looked to see any, you know, a whole lot about it. I just know it's an A. This is my super safe cutting thing. So if you ever want to know how not to cut open a box, you know, watch some of my shit. Every time I get a real utility knife, I lose it or my cats hide it or something. So I don't know if this is new or used. I don't know how many shafts it comes with. I just don't know a whole lot about it at all. So it comes in this box. I mean, inside the box is a big old white tube. Is there anything else in the box, kitties? Okay, kitty, here's a box. This this pretty fancy shit here. I've never had a white tube before. It says uh, it says mailing tube. Four by thirty six inches in white. Okay, that's pretty descriptive. I thought maybe having something this nice might have meant it was a new cue. It still may be. I'm looking ahead of time to see if there's an end that says open this end. I always have a problem. Anybody that's seen any of my stuff knows that I always open the wrong end and that I hate. Hate is not a strong enough word. Loathe is loathe a stronger word than hate. Clear tape for packing stuff like this. Clear tape is fine for Christmas presents and shit. But things like this, no. Clear tape is, is, is horrible. There are no words. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I guess I'm just going to just start hacking away and see if I can figure it out. Let's see, both ends kind of look to me like they're openable. But they're all covered this with this fucking white tape sorry language. With this damn white tape. Or clear tape, not white tape. White tape would be well in this case, white tape would be crappy because everything is white. I used to use like blue painters tape on stuff. It's easy to see I mean, it's not going to hold forever, but it will hold long enough to get shipped wherever it's going to ship. Whoever gets it can easily remove that tape. I'm going to go through all this, and it's going to end up being the wrong end, just, just so you know. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. That lid came off. Kitty. Cat toy. Oh, there's two kitties down here now. More cat toys. More cat toys. All right. So there's all kinds of crap in here. That's actually more crap than I was thinking. And nothing else in the tube. Here, there's two new. All right, so there's all kinds of stuff in here that I wasn't expecting. All, of course, with clear tape. Which, what was the word I used? I loathe clear tape. Well, let's do. Nobody cares. 
whether we're going to do this stuff then, except me. Oh my gosh. You people. With your clear tape. And especially your like clear fiberglass packing tape. Well, I have opinions about you people. But I'm going to try not to say my opinion. You just have to just take it from context and my tone of voice. So, there is a shade. I do not know if this is a new cue or not. This shaft looks to be brand new to me. And my camera is a focus pretty well. And we'll, you know, obviously we'll get to the rest. <laughs> we had a task for all last summer. And at some point, somebody shipping the thing and unpacking the thing or whatever and put a pretty good sized scratch in it. Probably doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Trying to cut through this damn clear tape. Stop it with the clear tape, people. Stop it. Just stop. Do we care that that's clear so it was, it's therefore prettier? No, we do not care. We do not care. Matter of fact, we hate it. If this shaft is absolutely not new, I mean, uh, I certainly hope the camera's picking that up. This shaft is pretty much filthy. I should probably wipe it down with some bleach. So, the cue is not new, and that, that makes a difference to me. When I usually when I do these unboxings, kitty cat toy, I uh, I'll do like ceremonial first shots. And I kind of been thinking about this cue. If it's a brand new cue, I believe it's going to be too fancy for me. Therefore, I wouldn't necessarily need to keep it. I might just put it right up for sale. And that would mean if it was brand new, I wouldn't want to even chalk it. But, that's not the case. It is not a brand new cue. You people with the damn clear tape. You people with the damn clear tape. They were finally going to get to the queue, but everybody's asleep by now, right? Hell, I'm almost asleep, and I'm the one down here doing it. All right. So, obviously, I can see the queue through the bubble wrap here, but... And as usual, the, the camera is going to see it for the first time the same time as me. And this is absolutely a fancy cue, okay? That the colors are showing up. Uh, this is boxed in in red and blue. I mean, absolutely fancy. And it, I googled this Chris Nitty, the Q maker. Yeah, he, he doesn't suck. This looks like a, well, kind of looks like a Spanish bull wrap, which is my favorite kind of wrap. But I am not sure. This may be some type of synthetic uh, material. It kind of feels a little bit synthetic is what I'm getting at. Uh, up here, again, with the red and blues. 
the white, which I'm going to assume is ivory, on the cute is expensive. Okay, I had a, I had a piece of packing material on there, and I wanted to make sure that wasn't a flaw in the thing. And then it goes up to the joint. I think this is a radial joint. But I'm not positive about that. Um, yeah, ebony forearm, which might make a, something like this a candidate for me for like a carbon fiber shaft. It makes it easier because they kind of they kind of match. But this could way too fancy for me to ever take into public. Yeah, you take a cue like this somewhere, and then you got to shoot good. You're expected to shoot good because you got something like this. And if you don't shoot you know, well, really well, not just good, then you're just some kind of a poser that's got a really fancy cue, but isn't good enough for it. That's the way I am. That's the way I feel about stuff like this. I feel like if I'm going to walk into a place like this, I damn well better beat everybody in the room. So we're going to screw on. This is the used shaft. Yeah, I'm almost positive this is called a radial joint. And I may have... I may have just one or two other cues with the radial joints. I don't have a lot. It's not very common for me here. Uh, the tip... My camera's not going to focus here. Um, the tip is layered... It doesn't have a, like different color layers or whatever, which some of the manufacturers use to uh, say this is my tip. It's got a you know a blue layer or whatever. Um, this one doesn't seem to have that. So I don't know what it is. Crap, that's some dark shit up on the end here. Can you see that? Where the hell that is? That's like some dark ass chalk. And the pyro is going on and okay, it's not great. I like the pyro chalk. I switched to it right after Derby City. It does not go on to a tip as easily as the V10. But I also don't miss you with the pyro. So that's a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot my ceremonial first shot. And then I'm going to open up what is probably an extension down there and see what's up with that. Nobody's seen my unboxings? No. <clears throat> Even if a cue is not going to be a main cue of mine, I shoot a ceremonial first shot with it. Just a superstition. I don't want to miss the first shot with a cue. That's new to me. So that's all I'm doing here. Rat feels pretty rough, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is some type of synthetic, and I don't particularly care. This is what I think. And what is that? Okay, that's tape residue. That is not a problem with the finish, so that bothers me. It feels a little. It feels front heavy, actually, uh, and this shaft, which is not the the new shaft. This is a used shaft. It absolutely feels used. So, made the first shot with the thing. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with this other shaft. Which, again, looks absolutely brand new. But it has been chalked. Uh-huh. So, I'm not going to be the first person to put chalk on this tip. I'm just going to put a tad on because I'm just going to shoot one shot. I'm just going to put some in the middle. It's a very pretty cute. I mean, absolutely. I, I didn't really remember entering the raffle. But... I guess I did because I felt like it was very pretty. 
Yeah, it is. Um, it, it surprises me a little bit because it's... This is a type of queue where if I walked into a, a place and they had this for sale, I wouldn't I wouldn't even look again at it. I would have wouldn't have no, I would not have bought it. No, this is too fancy and it's it's really out of my taste wheelhouse anyway. Just because all the intricacies and stuff like that as my tastes have changed over the years, I kinda of feel like this is just a little bit well, or a lot. Tugatti, and he has a signature down here, which you guys probably can't read because my camera won't focus. But it says, if my old eyes won't focus, I'm going to assume this says Nitty 2008-15 is what that says. I do not have a decoder ring to know exactly what that's supposed to mean. I gotta assume 2008 is the year 2008. What is 15th? The 15th queue he made that year? That seems reasonable. Don't know. As I'm doing all this, I am looking for flaws and anything in the finish and all that because, as I've determined, this is a used queue. But I have not seen any issues whatsoever. A couple things that I thought I saw were just tape residue from the damn clear tape. This ring work even has even has like little mother of pearl circles inside it. Little mother of pearl dots in that. That's yeah right. Because cause I'm that damn good. I need a cue like this. This setup feels, this setup feels heavier than if the first setup. It doesn't feel quite as forward heavy. Uh, it feels a little bit more balanced to me. Again, the shaft just isn't very smooth. And I'm not sure what the deal is with that. It's, it's also thick. This isn't going to show up because I'm not going to dig out my other cues to, to compare, but the thickness is more thick than than what I see in a lot of cues lately. Um, I bet this is 14. And that's perfectly fine because that's what I've always shot with. I'm old. When I started, that's that's what shafts were. A lot of the newer stuff that I've uh, gotten recently has been usually more like 12 and a half and 13 between those guys. Anyway, not yammering on that. Okay, so, if I wanted to, or if I was so inclined, I wouldn't have to throw the queue away anymore, because now I've made my ceremony the first jobs. And one other thing in that white tube, it, it really, if it's not an extension, it will astonish me. I guess it could be a vibrator for you. It's not. That was me trying to be funny. Get over it. So, this, okay, then you, you're not going to be able to read the, the text here, but it, this is Jacoby. So this would be, guessing, a Jacoby extension. And that must mean that the back end of this queue, yep, is fitted to accept this extension. Ah, oh, shit. Now I just ruined the queue. I have mentioned many, 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 many times that I do not like it when the extension, when you tighten it down, it goes directly against the butt cap on the cue. So this right here, this gap is going away. I do not like that even a little bit. Because eventually, shooting... Even if I only shoot with the extension once a year, it would, this would be banging against this. This would be banging against this. This is going to get damaged. This is the expensive part, okay? So, I usually will put some type of like an O-ring or something 
deep down in there to make sure that that I always have a little gap. And I don't think I've ever messed with the with the Jacoby extension before, but I will do that. I will try that. Put a, put a rubber O ring down in there, and just make sure I maintain like a sixteenth of an inch gap at least. I don't shoot with the extension all the time. I don't put it on and just it just stays there and I play a session. It's put it on, shoot a shot, take it back off. So having a little teeny tiny gap is not the end of the world for me. I would much rather deal with any you know inherent looseness by having that little gap. Deal with that for a shot, than deal with getting what seems to be a really fancy and expensive cue damaged by the extent. That's you know my opinion. Where's my remote? There it is. So that's my unboxing of you know my latest possession. This is actually my fortieth cue. I've had 40 before, but I traded some to get a Richard Black and all that. I have one empty slot on my wall. And it's bothered me to have that one empty slot. So on my wall, I have room for 40. I have 39, and it's like missing a front tooth or something. It just, it's just glaring at me. Every time I walk past there, I'm like, oh, I got to get a cube. Well, now, you know, now I have it. This cube may very well end up being for sale. It may end up being for sale pretty quickly. Um, I need to talk to Tony. Hey, what is this guy worth, you know? Because um, I do have some pretty major plumbing issues that are still happening here in my house. That one of these years, i got to, you know, bite the bullet and, and get that stuff fixed. So that's it. Um, that's my Nitty Q. That's my Jacoby Extension. That's Waterloo. Um, Pat Tech was around somewhere, but he's gone now. Anyway, bye guys.